Hi, everyone. I know it's 4.01, but we'll, we're going to wait just another minute or two before we get started because we still have people joining the room. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think we should go ahead and get started, even though uh, we probably still have a few people joining. I see lots of familiar faces out there, which is so great. Thank you all. Um, for those of you I don't know um, who, or who don't know me, my name is Beth Spillman, and I am ACA's Executive Director and have been now for about five and a half years. Um, we really appreciate all of you taking time, uh, the time to spend part of your Sunday afternoon with us, um, especially at such a busy time of year. And I don't know about where you are, but it's a beautiful day here in Richmond, Virginia. So thank you again for being here. Um, as you'll see from our presentations, we've had a really busy year with lots of amazing accomplishments. I always say our staff is small but mighty. Um, however, we certainly could not have accomplished nearly as much without the countless hours our incredible volunteers devote to the ACA. Uh, we are so grateful for your devotion to paddling, to paddling safety, and to the ACA. One um, really important strategic initiative that we've been working on this year, and it's involved a lot of different staff members, is um, a transition to a new membership system. The current membership, our current membership system is called Your Membership, and we've been on it since, I think, 2011. Um, but quite frankly, it really hasn't kept up with the times. And so we, are, we will be transitioning from Your Membership to a new system called Sport 80, and we expect we'll probably um, sort of push the button on that the at the end of the first quarter of 2025. For all the instructors out there, um, we want to assure you that this will not affect CMS. It will still be the system that instructors use uh, primarily for registering classes and keeping up with um, certifications and that sort of thing. Another exciting development for 2025 is that we will be able to increase the size of our staff. Um, we have received more funding for competition from the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee, as well as a new partner, the U.S. Performance Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this will enable us to hire more coaches and to provide more support to our athletes. Um, also, due to, I'll call it strong fiscal management over the past few years, we will also be able to hire a chief operating officer, which will enable us to um, leverage all of our talents, uh, I think, even more. Other priorities for 2025 include growing membership revenue and better defining the roles and responsibilities of our three councils versus our staff. Um, so, uh, we've all, we've got all of you on mute, um, today, um, and we have also disabled the chat, um, and that is just so we can stay focused on our presentation as we go through the slides. We're going to move quickly, and if you do have questions, we will open the chat up later in the presentation where you can submit a question by chat, and then if we have time at the end, we'll take as many questions as we can. Um, we're also um, happy to answer any questions that you might have after the presentation. So, um, you know, just be sure to let us know if you have any questions um, at the end. So, without further ado, I will turn the floor over to my colleague, Michelle Flynn, ACA's membership coordinator. Michelle's been with the ACA for about six and a half years, and you might recognize her voice because she is the person who answers the phone when you call the office in Fredericksburg. Again, this is our agenda. We have quite a few staff members who will be presenting today. So again, thank you all very much for being here. Michelle? 
Good afternoon. The ACA has approximately 15,000 members who come from about 54 different countries from around the world. Our members span a broad age range. You can see our in our older members, there is an obvious gender gap. In the millennials, the gap is a little smaller, but the great news is that among our younger members, we are really seeing that gender gap get smaller and smaller. It looks like more and more women are getting out into the paddling world and joining the ACA. The ACA's, as the ACA's membership coordinator, I have had the privilege of talking with our clubs, our members, students, and event attendees from all over. And I love hearing stories and learning about the impact that paddling has on all of the people. I'd like to take a moment and share a couple of stories that go along with these numbers. Currently, we have 446 lifetime members. To become a lifetime member, somebody must have been an ACA member for 50 years or more. This year, nine individual members joined that lifetime group. If, you're, if you think about it, combining those membership years of all those paddlers, you're looking at about 25,000 years of ACA membership. Next slide, please. Speaking of years of paddlers, did you know that the ACA was formed August the 3rd, 1880 on the shores of Lake George in upstate New York? There is a large bronze arrowhead shaped plaque hanging on the shore of Lake George, which is inscribed with the names of the 15 charter members of the ACA. In the past, the plaque fell into the water and it was lost for some time. But in 1963, it was recovered and affixed to the rock where it sits today. We're looking forward to celebrating the ACA's 145th birthday next year. Next, you're gonna hear from our communications coordinator, Casey Moss, about the different ways the ACA reaches out into the paddling public. Hey guys, uh, thanks for the introduction, Michelle. Um, like she mentioned, my name is Casey and I do communications at the ACA. Since joining the ACA um, staff in 2022, I have worked on keeping ACA members informed on the many opportunities and accomplishments of the ACA community. Everyone has individual preferences on how they like to consume information. So we've been trying to cover all the bases by sharing content via email, the ACA website, and the ACA's social media accounts. From the homepage of the ACA website, you can access blog posts and view upcoming events. In 2024, we posted over a thousand events on the ACA calendar, which included paddling courses taught by ACA instructors, competitive events, community paddling events and festivals, and stewardship opportunities. In 2025, I'm looking forward to creating and distributing more targeted communication to improve and who improving the processes for updating the ACA website, including national team member bios and individual web pages. Thank you so much to all the committee members who have helped me keep the web pages current. It's my intention that next year this process will be easier than ever. This year we shared a lot of content on social media. This included instructor of the month features, national and international competition highlights for USA national teams, upcoming community events, and more. Many of these posts link back to blog posts or web pages on the ACA website where you can get more information. The ACA also hosted five live panel discussions this year that viewers could join on Facebook or YouTube. These panel discussions hosted by ACA leaders dove into the ACA Public Policy Committee Regional Activity Council, Competition Council, Safety Education and Instruction Council, and our five-year strategic plan. Recordings of these pan live panels are available on Facebook and YouTube. Um, as soon as I'm done chatting with you guys, I'll put a link in the chat where you can access all of these videos if you're interested in watching the recordings. The best way to stay up to date on ACA News is to follow us on social media and to subscribe to our monthly membership newsletter. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions and feedback. Um, but next, you guys are going to hear from Kelsey Bracewell, who's going to dive into updates from the Safety Education and Instruction Department and the ACA's various grants and community building initiatives from the past year. 
Thanks so much, Casey. I really do appreciate it. Um, safety, education, and instruction are some of the most active facets of the ACA, and, and 2024 was a very dynamic year uh, with thousands of instructors and trainers from among our 12 instructional disciplines that held courses and workshops and events, which brought that joy of paddling to hundreds of thousands of people. And we're also extremely proud to welcome the new instructors, trainers, and leaders who joined our community this year. Um, ACA saw notable growth in some of our educational disciplines and programs, um, particularly in kayak fishing, pack rafting, raft guiding, and multidiscipline community leadership. Um, SCIC Executive Committee members Anna Levesque and Trey Rouse were instrumental in the strategic leadership of the SCIC, its discipline committees, nationwide events, volunteer working groups, and the growth of new curriculum, which will help those 22 million paddlers in the U.S. be safe and have more fun and make more memories with their families and their loved ones. In 2025, SCIC will continue to invest in their ongoing project called Leadership Pathways, uh, which is a excuse me, comprehensive curriculum that parallels the structure of ACA's instructor certification program and puts great focus on the facets of the paddling market, which include tour guides, trip leaders, expedition leaders, and things like that. Um, in addition, SCIC will also be focusing energy on resources, communication, and connectivity between our instructors and trainers and providing many opportunities to learn from one another and ultimately increase the marketability and quality of all instructor excuse me, all ACA instructor and leader led programming. Can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, we are fortunate here at ACA to receive different forms of grant funding to carry out special programs and outreach throughout the year. Um, three of our notable 2024 grant programs were conducted in partnership uh, with the US Coast Guard, LL Bean and the legacy left by ACA member and trainer Marge Klein. Uh, to begin, the ACA received two separate grants from the U.S. Coast Guard. The first one of them um, is an online education project, which it builds upon the free online paddling safety course that we created about two years ago. This year, we added three new modules, um, which are available online, 100% free in both English and Spanish. And that includes paddlecraft angling safety, nautical rules of the road, and rescue techniques. And as of this past Thursday, a couple days ago, we had 14,934 people <laughs> complete that online paddling safety course and one of those three new modules. Um, the one other Coast Guard supported project we conducted this year was called Geofencing Phase 3. Um, and the second of three years of funding concluded just last month. This project produced and promoted boating safety messaging, primarily focused on life jacket wear um, at five key locations across the country. And between these two Coast Guard funded projects, they created the single largest marketing effort and subsequent reach that we have ever had. Um, as you can see in this table here, the geofence marketing campaign ran, it began um, in National Safe Boating Week, mid-May, right, to September the 2nd, and it generated 10.9 million impressions and a total reach of 6.1 million people via Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. The online course um, promotional campaign was heavily focused on YouTube um, and was delivered primarily through sponsored videos. And those videos generated over 2 million impressions and almost 1 million full views. In 2025, we will continue to submit several new grant applications to support the expansion of SCIC's mission, as well as continue with the third year of this geofencing grant to increase not only ACA's brand awareness, but that overarching safety messaging um, within the overarching recreational boating community. Right now, I'd like to shift gears for a moment to grassroots grants. Um, in case you didn't know, from about 2002 until 2020, the ACA partnered with LL Bean to support the Club Fostered Stewardship Program, which over those 18 years provided $175,000 in support of ACA's clubs and volunteer groups who engaged in waterway cleanups and access initiatives. In 2021, LL Bean refocused their charitable giving priorities and then joined ACA to begin the Club Fostered Community Program, which is now used to amplify diversity and inclusion efforts of existing groups and projects through education, stewardship, competition, recreation, and waterway exploration events. So since the start of the CFC program three years ago, we've provided $70,000 to ACA clubs and affiliates who have illustrated commitment to building inclusive paddling opportunities and events in their own community. This year, we funded nine different projects um, 
through Canyon River Instruction, the Community Boating Center, Georgia Canoe Association, Ohana Wailaluma, Pride Day on the River, Tampa Bay Kayak Angler Anglers, Team River Runner National, Team River Runners Miami Chapter, and Wild Science Explorer. If we're granted funds from LL Bean in 2025, we'll continue this program and we really just can't wait to see the impact that's generated by these dedicated clubs and affiliates. And so, at last but certainly not least, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Marge Klein. Um, she's an ACA instructor, trainer, educator in both canoe and kayak who was named one of the 100 paddlers of the 20th century back by Paddler Magazine. And Marge, she left behind a legacy of love for supporting youth paddle sports participation in the Midwest states of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin. The 2024 recipients of the Marge Klein Memorial Grant are Eric Plath and the Camp Amnicon Foundation. Eric received funds for his Eagle Scout project to create a brand new public, public paddling access site at the east branch of the Little Calumet River in Indiana Dunes National Park. And Camp Omnicon Foundation received some funds to facilitate wilderness canoeing trips with youth in northern Wisconsin. Can I have my next slide, please? Thank you so much. So um, when we talk about community building, like take a second um, to think about your community and what that means to you. And I take a moment to think about the ACA strategic plan and I reflect on the ACA's past and its present. Me having been here a member, gosh, for 20 something years now, gosh. Um, and I, I recognize that each corner of our membership overlaps and interacts today, you know, to strengthen the fabric of ACA's mission. And while only a sampling of the thousands of courses and events that have been hosted in 2024, I wanna highlight a couple of events that showed phenomenal planning and collaboration and hard work that exemplifies our commitment to community. May I have my next slide, please? Thank you so very much. Um, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the Regional Activity Council and their activities over National Safe Boating Week. On May the 18th, this, uh, this past spring, and what may have been the largest ACA facilitated safety training event in our history, the RAC rallied the paddle sports community across seven different states to train 471 people in one single day. Um, instructors, volunteers, uniformed water safety personnel, and organizational partners came together to make this make this event a success in Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Missouri, and Texas. Next slide, please. Thank you. Our summer solstice celebration. Um, this, Casey did an amazing job, by the way, facilitating this to celebrate the longest day of the year. Um, our members, instructors, athletes, and clubs assembled over um, that mid-June week to organize over 50 public paddling events in 23 states and in four different countries. May I have my next slide, please? Thank you so very much. Um, the level one and two regional instructor updates hosted dozens of instructors across the country that came together in New York, Texas, and California to try new things, learn from one another, and continue to strengthen and use their ACA certification to educate and engage with the public. And so when they were asked, how did this experience compare to your expectations? I wanna let you know what a couple people said. They said, I found the multiple craft cross training to be a unique educational experience. I was never on a stand-up paddleboard before today, but was coached by my own fellow instructors to a successful standing position. The value of that activity was that everyone had something to teach and something to learn. Another participant said, different than expected, but in a very positive way. I appreciated the creative outside of the box programming and exercises, which not only required demonstration of technical skill, but also heightened my awareness of interpersonal dynamics and teaching methodologies. And lastly, this update made me more excited about being an instructor again. I'm looking forward to working with the new members in my club and I cannot wait to use the new tools that I've learned. So, um, take a really quick moment to watch this brief video that'll also show you what these update events were all about. Time that you experienced instruction that was different. You were like, whoa, like this is a totally different experience right now. Like I am learning in a way 
that I've never learned. Sweet. Coming here, I was petrified <laughs> of the SUP. Yeah. Because I had failed with it 10 years ago, and I said, I'm never doing it again. Okay. Okay? So just the little bit that we did, yeah. you know, that was great. All right. So I have, you know, five-year-olds to 85-year-olds. I need different ways to teach each person. Open to doing things different ways. Not one way to do it. So we're only two hours in. Has anybody done something they've never done before? Yeah. 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 Having gone through it, I love that it wasn't a, we are going to do this. And here are the directions. It was literally like, here's a list of things. Like, go through it real quick. Now go do it. And then come back and tell us like what you learned and what you pulled out of it and what you felt. And... I think that's amazing. I think as a student and as an instructor, I got much more out of it than I probably would have gotten if you just said to me, this is what we're doing. Thanks, Casey. You can go to the next one. Thank you so very much. So another amazing event was the Rafting Rendezvous. And this was the first event of its kind. And it was held on the world-class New River in West Virginia and it showcased ACA's new International Raft Guide Certification Program. And the event included catered meals and on-site camping, transportation to and from the river and a fun after party. And all of that provided the perfect venue for networking, the building of friendships and collaboration, you know, within and between the rafting industry, search and rescue professionals, independent paddlers and guides, and whitewater enthusiasts in general. So next time you're gonna to wanna to join in on the rafting rendezvous because it was an amazing time. Next slide, if you will. Um, the LEAD program, Leadership Exploration and Development <clears throat> Initiative was launched in 2022. Um, and it's a four day immersive experience that includes comprehensive coursework and ongoing mentorship, um, ensure, ensuring that the participants are fully equipped to achieve their goals and bring representation to the paddling world. And it was created as an opportunity for individuals to enhance their leadership skills on the water, build community, but simultaneously create a ripple effect of increasing paddle sports accessibility and participation in their own home communities. In 2024, ACA was able to facilitate the sixth and seventh program um, in partnership with some really amazing people and organizations, Venture Outdoors, located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the Texas Rowing Center in Austin, Texas, alongside Black Women Who, a group whose mission is to empower Black and Brown women to overcome barriers, build confidence, and discover their potential through outdoor activities. And we're excited to let you know that ACA will continue to support and facilitate this programming in 2025. So next up, it really is my pleasure to welcome ACA's competition director, Jed Hinckley. Hey all, thanks so much, Kelsey. Um, great to see some familiar faces out there and really excited to be part of this uh, annual meeting today. Um, again, my name is Jed Hinckley, I'm competition director. Uh, I started part-time with the ACA in uh, 2023, um, and then I've been in this role full-time for just over a year, and uh, I guess I would say what a year it's been. I'm always amazed by how many things are going on, um, you know, in all the different aspects of that the ACA covers, and as Beth said, a uh, small but mighty group, and uh, I'm blown away by, by everything that our staff and volunteers do, and competition is not uh, any different. So right here you see our 16 different disciplines that the ACA represents, um, some more active than others, um, but so many volunteers out there um, putting on races and events, um, running clubs, and uh, yeah, there's just so many awesome things. Can we go to the next slide, please? And all of this is included in our community. So what we have right here is we have a map that I created and, and is accessible on the ACA website. And I would love to add to this. So if anyone out there has information about particularly competition clubs or um, for other disciplines, I basically created layers here where people that wanna get involved um, and access competition uh, can find where these are located in the US. So you can see right here, this is just a screenshot. 
um, but slalom kayak cross races, whitewater parks where people may be doing freestyle events. Um, also included are sprint clubs, para clubs, ocean racing uh, events. And I want to continue to build on this. And as you can see, there's there's so much happening. And I think it's really important to recognize like all that is going on in our country, particularly on the competition side. Um, down in the corner here, you'll see one of those things that I was involved in this year and was um, thrilled to be part of was we had a ski to sea team, which happens in Bellingham, Washington. And I put out a call to all of the ACA membership to see if they wanted to join some of our teams. And we got about 30 folks out there, um, had three ACA teams. And some of those people were sprint racers. Some of them were slalom racers. Some of them didn't race really at all and were just ACA members and wanted to join. Um, so it was a really cool community building experience. I got to meet a bunch of people as part of it. And these are the type of things that I want to continue to do moving forward, because I truly believe that we are, uh, I sound like a broken record probably to some of you, um, stronger together. And the more collaborative we can be, um, the better our competition community and our whole community will be. So just, just please reach out to me if you have any questions about this. Can we move on to the next slide? So, so many things happening this year, so many different dis disciplines, but what we kind of decided to focus on, I'd be here for an hour if I were to share every single event that was happening in the ACA uh, network of competition. Um, we're we're kind of focusing, obviously, it was an Olympic year, but we also want to emphasize um, some of our disciplines that held world championships. So, Paracanoe World Championships were in Hungary, um, and Blake Haxton came home with a bronze medal there. Rafting, we sent teams to Rafting World Championships in Bosnia, Herzegovina, um, and came home with two bronzes there, I believe led by um, Trevor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Wildwater World Championships in Spain, um, and it was really cool. I was talking to Bob Bowfinger, and he, he and, uh, was really excited that we 11 athletes went, and for the first time since 1998, we had a, a men's C2 team event. Um, entered in the event. So um, yeah, lots of participation at the world championships in these three disciplines. Can we move on to the next slide? Um, we also, it, obviously it was an Olympic year. So for many of our sprint athletes, that was the focus, but we did send two athletes to sprint world championships in Uzbekistan. Um, only one athlete attended marathon world championships in Croatia, but Andrew, Andrew Searles represented us there and came in a strong 16th place. Um, and then the Ocean Racing World Championships were held in Portugal, and uh, Anna Swedish was able to take home the bronze in the Women's Open. And I think um, one thing I also want to focus on is just that um, so many of these competition disciplines have reinvigorated uh, competition committees, and I think Ocean Racing is one that they've done a ton in the last year with a, with a national um, series, a national point system, and uh, next year, they're looking forward to hopefully doing maybe a national championship. Um, so just lots of good stuff happening. Uh, following up on that, we did send a team to the Polo World Championships. Uh, I was talking to uh, Mark Poindexter the other day, and he said, unfortunately, they didn't get to compete in their last event because everyone got sick from the water. Um, but they still all had a lot of fun and came in uh, 20th place. Uh, Dragon Boat World Championships also was this fall. Um, they formed their teams about two weeks before the event happened. Um, for a variety of reasons, they have a newly formed competition committee. Um, and so they kind of had to put some teams together last minute, um, but still had some super strong showings, particularly in the 40 plus. Um, and Leslie said that most of the athletes in the 40 plus were actually over 50 with a few exceptions. So um, for a last minute putting together of teams, I would say they're pretty awesome results there. And then just happening this weekend um, was Sub World Championships in Sarasota, Florida. Um, and I was just checking results and it looks like in the uh, sprint open women Catrice Parrott won in Seychelles, who I think was the defending world champion, came in second. So American women first and second place in the in the uh, sprint open women. And then in the master 50 plus men, Packet Casey was in third. So three medals um, from uh, SUP World Championships in Sarasota. Can we move on to the next slide? Okay, so now we're gonna kind of transition, obviously, a lot of my time. Uh, work with a lot of disciplines, but mainly work with uh, with uh, with the Olympic and Paralympic disciplines. And something that we were definitely excited about, Beth already spoke uh, about it earlier, is some of the partnerships that we've been able to bring into our competition side. And one of those that we're hoping that we can move forward with um, in the future as well was DSG, which is Dick Sporting Goods. Um, their their in-house label um, was actually our national Olympic uh, supplier for apparel. So 
Um, they were really excited to be part uh, of the ACA, and we're hoping that we can keep that relationship moving forward. Um, also, the U.S. Performance Center, um, our sprint kayak athletes literally just got on the airplane yesterday to come back from testing they've been doing there. Um, our canoe athletes have been there, uh, sprint canoe, and our, we have a number of slalom athletes that are um, in residency program down in Charlotte there. So a couple of partnerships that I wanted to highlight, and we're hoping to get more as we move forward. Okay. So Olympics, I don't know if you guys knew those happened this year, but they did. Um, and just wanted to highlight our athletes that made the Olympic team. Uh, our veteran on the team was Casey Eichfeld. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina is where he currently resides, originally from Pennsylvania. Um, and this was his fourth Olympic game. So he uh, definitely has been able to stay at the top for a long time, which was awesome. Narrowly edging out Bug Locken for that spot. Um, had a tough uh, race in the semifinals with a 50, but still a very respectable 16th place finish. And I think what was even more cool is uh, not normally a kayak cross racer, our newest Olympic sport. Casey jumped in and, and gave it a go and uh, actually did really, really well. Um, and it was fun to see him out there doing that. Okay. Um, sure, some of you may have seen, uh, but for the first time in 20 years, we took home a medal in Slalom. Uh, that was Evie Leapfarth winning the women's canoe. Um, very exciting in that she was the last athlete to qualify for the finals in 12th place, which meant she went first. And then Lee and I had to sit there and watch everyone go and bite our nails and get really nervous. And then she ended up uh, taking home the bronze, which was, I wouldn't say unexpected, but um, we knew there was an outside shot, but really awesome to see her put down a really good run on a really tough course um, and get that bronze medal. So she's only 20 years old, maybe 21 now. Um, so looking for more things for her in the future. Um, and she does compete in all three Psalm events. So lots of other good results, but for the sake of time, we'll move on to the next athlete. Um, small but mighty, as Beth says. So our little organization uh, took home another medal and the defending Olympic gold medalist from Tokyo is Nevin Harrison. Um, she did not get the gold in this Olympics, but if you see that picture on the right there, uh, that's how close it was for her getting a gold. It says one one hundredth of a second. Um, I think they had to round up to one one hundredth of a second, but the photo finish did show that by about mm, maybe an inch and a half, um, Nevin uh, was a silver medalist um, in the women's 200. Uh, interestingly, her time would have been a new world record, except for the fact that somebody else beat her by one one hundredth of a second. So still an amazing performance by Nevin. Um, and we're hoping for more in the future from her as well. Um, attending his first or making his first Olympic team was Jonas Ecker from Bellingham. Um, he competed in two different events, uh, the K2 500 meter, and then he also competed in this uh, K1 1000 meter. And um, I think I would also like to highlight, very impressive to make an Olympic team, but Jonas is also the U23 world champion competing against all those dominant sprint countries um, in the men's single 1,000 meter. So he is he is the reigning world champion, um, and which was a really exceptional result for him. Um, so he's paddling really well. Uh, Jonas's partner in the K2 is Aaron Small, and the two of them together actually finished eighth place in the K2, which is the first time that a men's a U.S. men's K2 has made an A final in 24 years. So. Really impressive performance from them. Uh, Aaron also paddles in the K1, and he was actually the silver medalist um, at the Pan American Championships, which happened last spring. So both of them great individually and um, had a really awesome performance together in the K2. Um, on the Paralympic side, I was I was team leader for the previous two events. I was not team leader for the Paralympics. Um, Shelly Oates-Wildling took our Paralympic team to Paris. Um, Blake, we qualified two athletes, Blake Haxton, um, this is his third Olympics, and he is an amazing athlete in that in his first Olympics, he was a rower. In his second Olympics, he was a canoe, a para canoe and rower, and this time he was just competing in the para canoe, um, and he got the bronze medal um, both at the World Championships and at the Paralympics this year. And last but not least, um, Jillian Elwert qualified our women's spot for para canoe. This is her first Olympics, and it came home with a very respectable 11th place finish. Um, she also had a ninth place finish at a World Cup, 
earlier this year. So really solid season for her and awesome to see her qualify for her first games. Um, so I think if I'm not mistaken, this is my last slide. Um, but one thing I did just want to sort of emphasize is that um, lots of good energy, lots of good momentum. I think our growth potential is huge um, through this collaboration and multidiscipline events and all that kind of thing. And so some things we're going to be working on is growing our competition membership uh, in the coming year, um, because I think we're just sort of at the tip of the iceberg of, of what we could be. Um, the competition council has been really integral in bringing all the different disciplines together. And we're actually working on some coaches education resources that we can share with our community. So that's going to be a big emphasis for the coming year. And then we want to bring home some medals at, at world championships. So that next year we're on this call, I can report on more good news. So looking for medals in sprint para and slalom um, in the coming year. Now I'm going to hand it off to Brett Mayer to talk about some of the things that happened in public policy this year. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jed. Really appreciate it. And congrats on such a great year. It's really cool to see the recap of, of all that good work. Really awesome. Um, Thanks to Beth, thanks to our staff, thanks to our board, all the instructors, all the members out there. This is a great organization to be a part of. And every year we get to this meeting and I'm just super stoked um, to continue to kind of carry the mantle on the public policy front. Um, it was a great year. 2024 was super exciting. The ACA, uh, two years ago, we we really got together. Um, we established a public policy advisory committee and planted the flag around deciding to really be the leading voice in paddle sports regulation. Uh, we've worked on a variety of paddle sports issues like over the course of our history, um, but we're really uniquely positioned to be the voice to represent the interests of paddlers when it comes to mandatory education, life jacket wear, and how paddlers pay into the system. And that's anything from you know, paying like a per boat taxation fee in different states um, and all kinds of different stuff. Um, two real big highlights this year. Um, on the mandatory education front, we've for the past year have worked really hard um, to reestablish a partnership with the National Association of State Boating Law Administrators and really lean in and listen to the needs of state boating educators in different states and we decided that we, among the already incredible suite of educational resources that we have as an organization, um, that we needed to develop something new uh, to best support kind of uh, the recreate the exploding numbers that we see in the recreational uh, recreational paddling community um, and some of the associated incidents, um, whether they be kind of user conflict or, um, accident and injury among folks that are are new to the sport. And so we have developed, uh, you can see the picture there, the smart, smart Start for paddling. Smart Start was something that we had. Um, it's kind of a resurrection from some resources that we had in our history, our educational history. Um, and we've just been really working hard to put together a resource that could be used by really anybody um, to introduce paddle sports um, safely that is really research informed um, in terms of some of the some of the numbers that that we see out there to address some of those needs. So um, hopefully this this spring um, that course will be will be out there for the public to see. So that's super exciting. Um, and I know that sort of sounds more education focused, but it's really the intersection of policy and ed. Um, where we really we believe in education before regulation as an organization. That's really our perspective. So we really feel like if we can put out a better resource that's easier to easier to use um, for for anybody out there, that those can help address um, you know some of the some of the things we're seeing in the community. Back in September, um, another big highlight this year. It was the 10 year anniversary of the Outdoor Alliance. Uh, Pam Dillon and Risa Shimoda, two longtime um, ACA members, uh, former board chair, um, helped kind of found the idea for the Outdoor Alliance about 20 years ago. Um, some of the, in some of the really early days that eventually led to the formation of the official Outdoor Alliance 10 years ago. But this is really the human powered recreational community coming together to advocate for kind of shared policy um, perspectives to protect public lands and, and waters. Um, 
it's an incredible honor anytime I get a chance to to go up to the hill and to to work with colleagues uh, from different organizations, including Surfrider, American Whitewater, um, American Alpine, um, and just make the rounds in the hill and visit offices. And you really just get the sense. There's so many amazing accomplishments that we've had as an organization as a whole over the past ten years. Um, and while we were, you know, reflecting and celebrating some of those huge wins, it was really also a chance to go and push uh, some legislation that's, um, you know, at the gates of being passed right now, the Explore Act, um, which is a package of outdoor recreation policy. Uh, the Expanding Public Lands Outdoor Recreation Experiences Act is what it stands for. But that bill takes important steps to expand and improve outdoor rec opportunities um, for, for all types of recreation. So things like biking on long distance trails, um, protecting America's rock climbing act to safeguard wilderness climbing, and then really relevant to the paddling community, the simplifying outdoor access for recreation act, it's called SOAR. Um, and that helps improve recreational permitting for outfitters and guides. So that's, you know, that's something that's really important to specifically to our community. And so we were making the rounds in the hill, kind of making a plug for that. And so hopefully we'll see that across the finish line um, over the next couple of months here. Um, and I'm calling in from Asheville. And so I feel like it would be remiss to not, you know, mention the hurricane and some of the things that are happening on a policy front here. Um, Outdoor Alliance is also supporting a lot of recovery efforts in, in Asheville in this region after we were hit from the hurricane. Um, and I'm also would love to ask anyone out there who's interesting. We just put out um, an every action form um, for an issue that's happening locally. But the Nalachucky River is an incredible class three, four river uh, just, outside, just outside of Asheville. And as everyone is doing their best to kind of recover from the hurricane, they're repairing a rail line on the side of the river. And in order to do that, because their entire rail line was washed out and is kind of all mangled and in the river, CSX is the rail company and they're, they are digging up the riverbed um, and digging up the riverbed really destroys a lot of the features that we would care about as a paddling community. And so if you see that floating out there and you can make your voice heard, it really makes a difference to kind of bang the drum on those kinds of issues um, so we can so we can prevent that from happening. Um, and it's likely that those there's a few other things that are going to pop up in this area as we continue to recover as well. But the Southeast in this area is such a huge paddling hub. Um, it's really important for all of us to kind of to kind of lend a hand and to sort of pay attention to those issues. So again, it's been a great year. Um, honored to serve the ACA. And again, thanks for having me. And I'm going to pass it off to Mackenzie, our volunteer coordinator, and she's going to fill you guys in on that front. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks, Brett. Um, my name is Mackenzie Holbrook, and I'm the volunteer coordinator here at the ACA. I have been in my role with the ACA for almost a year now, um, and it has been such an honor to connect with so many of our members and volunteers throughout that time. Um, you know, I, when I'm connecting with all of our volunteers, you know, from the board of directors to regional activity council state directors to even our event volunteers, you know, there's this idea that we're all here for the same reason, and it's that we believe in the mission of the ACA, and we all love paddling. Um, as you can see here, in a lot of our 2024 projects, the purpose of all these initiatives is really laying the groundwork for measuring volunteer success, learning more about our volunteers' needs, um, and growing our volunteer network in the future. Um, what we really want is for our volunteers to understand the opportunities that are available to them and to connect people with opportunities that align with their own passion. Um, we also want to make it easier for our volunteers to understand the roles that they're serving in and align the expectations between the ACA and all of our volunteers. Um, my personal favorite initiative from this year was starting our volunteer newsletter. Um, this is a quarterly newsletter that we're sending out um, to anyone who in their membership just checks that they want to get volunteer communications. Um, so you just have to log into your member profile, sign up for volunteer communications. Um, but what I really love about this newsletter is it highlights the achievements 
of our volunteers. And it's a great way to show our gratitude to all of our amazing volunteers. Um, without our volunteers, the ACA would not be the organization that it is. Um, we have so many incredible volunteers that dedicate so much of their time and support the members and the mission of the ACA. Um, and remember that all members of the ACA have an opportunity to impact paddling communities um, from a national to a local and state level. And a great example of this is we do have our Regional Activity Council state director elections that will be sent out next month. Um, so make sure whenever you see these elections um, to go in and vote so your voice as a member can be heard. Um, I'd like to pass it over to Beth Smillman again for updates on our board of directors. Thanks, Mackenzie, and thank you for all your hard work over the past year. We really appreciate it. Um, so now I am going to provide an update on the Board of Directors election, which closed uh, a week ago today. Um, first of all, I want to thank our outgoing board members, um, Hunter Brandstetter, who has served one term on the board, um, who also chaired our grievance committee um, due to his legal background. Hunter is uh, rolling off the board, but he promises to stay involved, especially with the grievance committee and some of his um, ancillary responsibilities at the ACA. Next, I'd like to thank Tom Crockett. Tom has served two terms as one of our elite athlete directors um, and represented our sprint discipline. Uh, next, we want to thank Kenny Casper Bauer, another sprint athlete who um, along with serving on the ACA board represented our athletes um, as a representative to the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee's Athletes Commission. Um, so Kenny um, is training hard, he works full time, he's really put his heart and soul into this, uh, into his role at the ACA. Um, and he, we are, we're sorry to see him go, but we certainly thank him for all of his many contributions over the past few years. And then uh, last, but definitely not least, Anna Levesque, um, who has, who stepped in to chair our safety education and instruction council a few years ago, and has really done just a stellar job bringing a lot of new ideas and new energy to the SEIC. And though he wasn't on our board of directors, um, since I'm talking about the SEIC, we also want to thank Trey Rouse, who was uh, the vice chair of the SEIC. And Trey um, is also rolling out of that role. Um, and we want to thank him for his just in incredible contributions over the past few years. So um, we'd also like to welcome our newly elected board members. Um, Beth Coslett, who is one of our instructors and also super involved in the Regional Activity Council. Um, Bev, Bev re-upped for another term and was elected to that position by our members. Um, our new, um, so our athlete who will be replacing Kenny Casper Bauer is Jonas Ecker. Um, and Jed talked a little bit about Jonas um, because he competed um, in Paris at the Olympics. Jonas um, will be our Athlete Commission representative and will also serve on our board of directors. Um, we have an, a new director, Brenda Jen, who was elected as an at-large director. And we are super excited about uh, Brenda joining the board um, with a lot of new, fresh ideas and really great experience. And another uh, person who re-upped for another term and was also elected um, by our members to that second term is Robert Kaufman, although I, I think Robert previously served on the board, so I don't think it's really his second term, but it's a second time around, second term this time around. So we thank Robert for, um, uh, for running again, and um, Robert meets all the definitions of our independent uh, representative and so we thank him for agreeing to serve another term. We had, we had many other great candidates for the board. Um, we're sorry we couldn't uh, elect all of them, but we certainly will be in touch with those nominees who were not elected and hope that perhaps they would be interested or willing to serve on one of our board committees. So we still have um, some elections that are 
um, going on at the moment. Uh, Mackenzie mentioned we're going to launch the state director election um, in the next week or so. But we are um, we also still have to represent uh, to elect um, three of the four athlete representatives to the board. Um, and that will be taking place in the next couple of weeks. And then the um, the safety education and instruction um, council leaders, um, their election will close, I think, at midnight tonight. And this election involves selecting um, the chair, vice chair, secretary, and an at-large member who comprise the safety education and instruction council. So again, thank you to all the nominees for all of these positions and congratulations to our new leadership. Now I think I will be turning the floor over to Emma Walther. Uh, Emma is our accounting director. Thank you, Beth. I just want to give you a little glimpse of our numbers and um, that way you can see where we're working from, just our revenue and our expenses. Casey, if you want to give me the next slide, please. This is also showing growth in our, our net assets over the last year. Um, we've continued to see growth since 2020 and it might have gone back farther than that, but based on what we've presented to you, we're still seeing growth. Casey, if you can give me the next slide. Along with this, I'm gonna let you know what the 2025 investments are. So that is hiring an additional staff, including our COO and coaches and competition staff. We're gonna roll out the SEIC's Leadership Pathways Project, organize two or three leadership exploration and development or lead events, launch robust sprint and slalom grassroots development efforts, support RAC initiatives, including the Instructor Contest, Every Action Software, and Club Express. This total investment is approximately $400,000. I'm going to turn it back over to Kelsey and she's gonna present our awards. Thank you, my dear. <clears throat> Thank you to all the staff members who have made presentations today. We've been working really hard to summarize all of the great things that we have done and have yet to do for you. Um, as Emma just mentioned a moment ago, um, the RAC Instructor Contest has been going on for the past three years, I believe. And as you can see here, we've got some pretty cool uh, grand prizes and random drawings um, for all of the instructors, trainers, and educators who report their cor coursework in the course management system. So over here for our instructors, our grand prize winner, Ryan Collins. And as you can see, we have a bunch of other honorable contenders, the follow-up 10 instructors who have taught, um, gosh, a multitude of students over the past year. So congratulations to everybody who taught any course at all, of course, but our grand prize winner and our contenders here. Casey, oh, thank you so very much. Here we have our instructor trainers and educators, our grand prize winner, Mr. Jeff Atkins, and our Paddle America Club's grand prize winner, the Philadelphia Canoe Club. So as you can see um, in our honorable contenders for trainers and educators, Tom, Jake, Beth, Randy, Rick, Mike, Trey, Anna, Josh, and Ben. These are from all over the country and all of our different disciplines, which is really fantastic. Being great leaders um, in our instructional side of the house. And over here in our Paddle America Clubs, you can see a great geographic dispersion of Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, New York, Arkansas, um, Wilmington, that's North Carolina, I believe, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the Inward Canoe Club. So we've got a lot of clubs that are really active, teaching a lot of classes of all different varieties. But this particular contest focuses on levels one and two, which is our introductory level. So we are getting great training, fun, inclusive opportunities and home clubs in the hands of lots of entry level paddlers, which is absolutely fantastic. 
Um, before we move on, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's been listening to our presentations thus far. Oh, I'm so sorry, Casey, my mistake. And our free random drawing winners, please excuse me, a free year of membership for instructor Greg Nance out of North Carolina, PAC membership to the Los Angeles Kayak Club over there in LA. And our special feature, Bonifacio, is from Virginia. Um, and I believe he actually is with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, if I know him well enough. But anyway, other cash prizes. Hey, Jill over there in Florida, Jeremy in Washington State, Daniel in Texas, Tom in California, and Steve over there in Illinois. Thanks, y'all, for teaching such high-quality classes, letting us know how that went, and we hope that you will participate in our contest again next year. Um, coming up in just a moment is going to be our annual awards ceremony. So everybody sit up straight, get on the edge of your seat, maybe buckle your seatbelt. If you have a seatbelt, buckle that too, because um, we really are excited to bring um, some honor, some attention, and some congratulations to a lot of really influential people and groups this year. All right, everybody, thank you for enduring the fanfare. I am delighted to present our first award, the prestigious Excellence in Instruction Award, which is presented to an ACA member um, for his or her outstanding contribution to paddle sports education and instruction. Oftentimes, this is referred to as the Instructor of the Year Award, and the recipients of this award have continuously set the example, not only in teaching ability and technical skill, but in the professionalism, connectivity, and service to students of every background. And it is my honor to present the 2024 Excellence in Instructor Award to Rob Carmichael. Rob is the Director of Outdoor Experiential Education at UWC Thailand International School in Phuket, Thailand. And in this role, he has pioneered a, a dynamic outdoor education program and established an outdoor education center, which integrates paddle sports into the experiential learning model delivered across the entire school and the community. The programs that he oversees allow students to forge meaningful connections with the outdoors through consistent and regular structured engagement, from early years all the way to senior students. And as an ACA Coastal Kayak instructor trainer, Rob leads procedural implementation of many interwoven programs, empowering both UWC staff and st senior students to become skilled safety conscious leaders. Rob has shown a great commitment to empowering, empowering paddlers with a range of disabilities, both physical and sensory. By sharing his experience and advocating for inclusivity, Rob not only inspires those around him, but also emphasizes the importance of accessible outdoor education for everyone. With an unwavering commitment to safety, environmental stewardship, and lifelong learning, Rob exemplifies the values celebrated by our education, excuse me, <clears throat> Excellence in Instruction Award. So everybody, please join me in congratulating the Excellence in Instruction Award winner for 2024, Rob Carmichael. I've opened up the chat. If you would like to send your congrats to Rob or any of our future award winners, please drop your congrats, drop your applause, your comments. Please go right ahead. Um, the next award is the sanctioned event of the year, which is presented to the top ACA sanctioned event as nominated by the overarching ACA membership. So you've already learned a little bit about this event earlier today, and it is my pleasure to announce the ACA Rafting Rendezvous as the 2024 sanctioned event of the year. And there's a multitude of reasons why this event was so impactful. And one of those was simply the leadership, the professionalism, and the organizational excellence that was illustrated by the SCIC's rafting committee. Each member of this committee played a critical role in the development of the program, the venue selection, the forging of relationships with event sponsors, and the rollout of the new ACA curriculum in uh, raft guiding that promotes unity, safety, and fun across the rafting industry and plays a huge role in the outdoor recreation market in the US and abroad. 
A big cheers and round of applause for Elisha MacArthur, Jeff Kogel, Marcel Beeg, Jess Lewis, Byron Beers, Brent Roth, Kevin Tyrell, Tom Burrows, and all the others who made this event so note noteworthy. So congratulations and thank you for your hard work in hosting the 2024 sanctioned event of the year. Everybody, please feel free to put your congrats and your chats. And if you attended the rafting rendezvous, please give us a shout out over here in the chat. The next award that I have the honor of presenting is the Green Paddle for Waterway Conservation. And that is presented annually to an individual or a group that has made an outstanding contribution to paddle sports by protecting the waterways that paddlers know and love. And I am very pleased to honor Wild Science Explorer's Nez Pierce Natural History and Paddling Project as the recipient of this year's Green Paddle Award. Based in McCall, Idaho, this program has engaged low-income Nez Pierce Native American teenage tribal members in a five-day science and stewardship rafting education um, journey down the Lower Salmon River. And the trip was conducted in part to develop awareness of Nez Pierce natural history and apply that to the present day environmental issues in the Lower Salmon River corridor, which has traditionally been used by the Nez Pierce and has been for hundreds of years. The program was a step into Wild Science Explorers guide and training class. And the teens who attended this trip obtained not only guiding and conservation leadership skills, but had a great opportunity to meet some of their tribal leaders and exchange stories about their culture and their heritage. So I wanna say thank you to Wild Science Explorers for your commitment to the multiple facets of waterway conservation and, and for providing young paddlers with an avenue to recognize and engage with their history via the Lower Salmon. And everybody, please join me in congratulating them as the recipient of the 2024 Green Paddle for Waterway Conservation Award. All right, the Joe Pena Volunteer of the Year Award is presented to one or more volunteers each year for extraordinary service at the local, regional, or national level. And I cannot even begin to detail or describe the depth of commitment by this year's Volunteer of the Year Award recipients, Anna Levesque and Trey Rouse. <clears throat> As chair and vice chair of the SCIC, they have paved the way and set the example for inclusive, student-centered, and holistic education and instructional programming that bridges the gap between paddling <clears throat> and learning your way through life's many other dynamic environments. <laughs> Anna and Trey were instrumental in the success of ACA's lead programs this year, the level one and two regional instructor updates, <clears throat> the soon to be launched leadership pathway program, growth in the instructor, trainer, and an educator cadre, and overall connectivity that threads through the students, the instructors, the committees, the staff, and the ACA board of directors. And Anna and Trey, if y'all are here, it really has been my honor and privilege of my professional career to work alongside you this year, and I cannot think of anyone more deserving of the 2024 Joe Pena Volunteer of the Year Award. Thank you for so very much for pouring your time, your talents, your energy, and your heart into the mission of the ACA. Everyone here, if you have not yet, please drop a note of appreciation for Anna and Trey into the Zoom chat. Our next award is the J. Henry Rushton for Organizational Excellence, and it's presented annually to an organization for outstanding achievement in advancing paddle sports and the mission of the ACA. With this award, <clears throat> excuse me, I would like to take an opportunity to recognize the Paddle Sports Trade Coalition, whose member organizations are dedicated to advocating for and promoting the strength of the paddle sports industry in North America, and so <clears throat> supporting commerce and inclusive access in coordinated efforts to expand this vibrant community of participants in all human and sustainably powered boating activities. The leaders and members of PTC are collaborative, authentic, and passionate teams of brands, retailers, outfitters, and sales representatives who influence, advocate, and foster growth and development within the paddle sports market segment. Their collab event that was held earlier this year in Oklahoma City was just a small illustration of their success to come. And the ACA would like to recognize the excellence in their planning, organization, and teamwork that brought together and inspired different complementary corners of our community. 
Congratulations, PTC. We are so proud of you and cannot wait to see more of how you're bringing the paddling industry together all in one boat. Uh, the next award is the Havens Leadership Award, <clears throat> which recognizes individuals whose practices and behaviors best serve the interests and the success of USA paddle sport athletes. The recipient of the 2024 Havens Leadership Award has not only been a pioneer in the whitewater paddling and competition community, but she has dedicated her professional and volunteer life to the promotion of inclusive paddle sports. I'm talking about none other than Risa Shimoda, an absolutely unstoppable leader for freestyle and other paddling, excuse me, competitive paddling disciplines as well. But she truly has shown the meaning of investment and leadership as chair of ACA's Competition Council, who's participated wholeheartedly in, on ACA's board of directors, but in countless other initiatives and areas that have made a lasting impression for the success of ACA's role in the competition community. Risa, it is my honor to know you and to serve beside you. Thank you so very much for your leadership of our competition, um, our competition initiatives, competition goals, everything. We couldn't do it without you. Our next award that I am honored to bring to you is the Outstanding State Director Award. And that is presented each year to the state director of the, excuse me, one or more state directors each year for their contributions to enhancing paddle sports in their own state. And it is truly my honor to announce the recipient of this award is Anthea Raymond. Anthea currently serves as ACA's California State Director and has served in many other ACA leadership positions in the past. Her continuous support of the ACA and enthusiasm for promoting the safe and fun growth of the paddle sports community is, is truly evident in her dedication, her passion, and her volunteerism. She has spearheaded many projects, including the Cal California Paddle Hero Awards. She built a renewed excitement for kayak surfing via the Surf Kayak Revival event that was held earlier this year and helped bring about the level one and two regional, ups, regional instructor updates that happened in California. The state of California has a stronger paddling community, not just because she helps make these things happen, but because she also consistently promotes these opportunities to make sure that the word gets out and people get invited. The communication channels are a critical part of her mission and congratulations, Anthea. We are so thankful for you and for your amazing, impactful, and energetic work as part of our state director program. Um, next, in, if is Dave here? Does anyone know? I'm not sure. He is here. Um, the next award is the President's Award Dave, as our president, if you would like to present this, can you raise your digital hand? I'm more than happy to do it, but if you would like to, I would love to give you that opportunity. Okay. Is any can anybody see Dave? <laughs> okay. Forgive me. I'm just going to go on ahead because I am not able to see him myself. Please excuse me. So the President's Award is given um, and selected by the ACA Board President to individuals for outstanding service to the ACA or to the paddle sports community on a national level. And it, of course, everyone here knows that in September of this year, Hurricane Helene carved a 500 mile path of destruction throughout the Southeast. In some communities, Helene served as a geological resurfacing event and swept away roads, bridges, and towns all in its path, which will require months, if not years, to rebuild. In some other areas, floodwaters, winds, tornadoes, and other crazy events contributed to significant loss of property, power, and water infrastructure, and so many lives were affected. However, in devastating moments like this, we acknowledge and we recognize the people who have stepped up to make a difference, and several ACA leaders stepped up to help their communities recover in the immediate aftermath of this disaster. And so this President's Award is intended to recognize all of the members of the community who volunteered, donated, and served in any role to help those affected by the hurricane, whether in a capacity to clean up, rebuild, bring supplies, or serving in rescue and recovery roles. 
we are heartened to say that the number of ACA members and other community leaders who stepped into one of these roles to help their own neighbors are too numerous to count. But we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the contributions of those that we know um, and just generally as a representation of all the paddlers who responded to the call for help from those in need. ACA instructor trainer Chris Wing and ACA instructor trainer Trey Moore, Green River Conservation Project leader John Grace, Green Riverkeeper Erica Shanks, Helene Rebuild Cooperative founders Cooper Leist, Lance Buskey, and Sam Ayatarola, the Salamander Fund at the French Broad Academy, athletes Dane Jackson and Mason Hargrove, outdoor adventure rafting Sarah Beth Neal, River Folk Rescue Sarah Arvidson, and a large group of leaders from USA Raft, Nola Chuckley Outdoor Learning Institute, Appalachian Paddling Enthusiasts, Osprey Whitewater, Blue Ridge Paddling, Mountain True. Again, they are too numerous to count and to name, but thank you for everyone who helped organize and channel our community-wide contributions in the wake of Hurricane Helene. And we know that there is still much work to be done and we thank you in advance for everything you have and you will do to rebuild a community so filled with passionate paddlers. If you would like to drop your notes of heartfelt thanks to these amazing volunteers in the chat, now would be a great time. All right, and this is my last award of the evening, everybody. So thank you if you've stuck around this long um, for being in part of this, being part of this call and for honoring all of the people who have done such great things in the paddling world. So everybody, it is my honor to announce the winner of our Legends of Paddling Award Deb Volturno. Her status as a legend is not just made up of her significant accomplishments, but is also formed by her impact in the sea kayaking community as a whole. She's an ACA level five advanced open water coastal kayak ITE and a level four performance surf kayak ITE. So many or even most of the instructors in the Pacific Northwest region have received some type of training assessment or mentoring in their journey from Deb. And she is a key player in this critical time for the surf kayaking discipline and its current revival within the ACA. She has been a part of surf kayaking from the earliest days when there was just one class available. And she was a fixture in the Bay Area and Santa Cruz kayaking scene for a really long time, participating in competitions and running the California Canoe and Kayak Outpost in Half Moon Bay. She currently holds the rank of captain of the Tsunami Rangers and an ocean adventure kayaking team that originated near San Francisco. At a sea kayak surf champion, she was also a member of the US surf kayak team in which she represented numerous competitions put on by the World Surf Kayak Association all across the world. She's a, one of the founding members of the Surf Sirens, an instructional and community building event now expanded through New Zealand, which is focused on introducing more women to kayak surfing. From exploring traditional kayaking history through building Inuit and Aleut skin on frame kayaks to paddling extensively all over the world, Alaska, all the way up and down the coast of the US and Canada, Mexico, Italy, New Zealand, Costa Rica, and Brazil, she is not just an accomplished and talented paddler, she is deeply committed to developing and contributing to the paddling community. As evidenced by testimonials from a, a wide variety of paddlers, Deb has made a tremendous impact on the mountaineers sea kayak community, um, as well as the Olympic Peninsula Paddlers a Kayak Club out of Port Angeles, Washington. So she has had an impact in one form or another in the training, certification, and mentoring of sea kayak leaders across different clubs and ACA kayaking courses for many years. And much like her impact in the Northwest, she is a common thread in the influence of technical and teaching skills in the region. But more than that, is that Deb has influenced a collective endeavor to make sea kayaking more accessible, inclusive, and representative. For this reason and more, Deb, you are a legend of Paddling Award and you are being inducted into the ACA's Hall of Fame. Thank you so much everybody for attending this award ceremony. Thank you, Kelsey, for such a fancy, um, show. I felt like I was at the Grammy Awards. Um, so th that, that concludes the formal part of our program today. We um, congratulations to all the award winners. Certainly all are extremely well deserved. It's always so impressive to me 
um, when we do the awards uh, part of the presentation to hear about the amazing accomplishments of so many of our members. And it's always so difficult to actually select the winners of the awards because, um, you know, all of you do such amazing and great work. Um, so I guess we have a few minutes. If there are any questions, we can take those through the chat. Um, or we can end on a on a high. Um, very excited about all the award winners and inspired by all the great work that they that they and all of you do um, all year long. Any questions? All right, seeing none. I think it's time for our. Uh, who is the alternate to Jonas? Thank you, Deb. That's a very good question. Casey Eichfeld is the alternate to Jonas Ecker um, for the USOPC Athletes Council or Athletes Commission um, rep. All right. Well, again, thank you all for, for being here today. Oops, Robert, Robert has a question. Robert, you've got to put it in the chat. <laughs> um, the answer is maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> Do you want to put it in the chat? All right, well, I'll answer your question after this, whatever your question might be. All right, well, thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure, and uh, we look forward to um, seeing you all again next year. And I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving and really great holidays. <laughs>